Ever wonder how your messages travel across the internet in just milliseconds? Imagine sending a package across the globe, but instead of one package, it's broken into thousands of pieces, each traveling different paths and arriving perfectly at the destination. Welcome to the magic behind the internet, or TCP IP. In this video, we'll dive into the protocol that makes the internet possible and how it's the digital postmaster ensuring your data gets where it needs to go safely and accurately. It's all thanks to TCP IP, the universal protocol of computer networking that connects us in ways that seemed impossible just a few decades ago. But how did we get here? It all started in the early 1970s when the US Department of Defense created ARPANET, one of the first computer networks connecting research institutions over telephone lines. As it expanded beyond government and military use to universities, it laid the foundation for the internet we use today. ARPANET relied on Network Control Protocol, or NCP, which, due to its limitations, was later replaced by TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, to ensure reliable data transmission across multiple networks. Paired with Internet Protocol, or IP, for routing and addressing, TCP IP became the global standard for moving data across the internet, connecting the world. So how does TCP IP ensure data moves reliably and efficiently across the internet? Let's break it down using an analogy. Imagine you're sending a package through the postal service. You address it and you send it off. Along the way, it passes through several stages. Local post offices, sorting facilities, delivery trucks, before finally reaching your recipient. In the same way, before you send data over the internet, it moves through different layers of TCP IP, where each layer adds necessary information, like addressing and formatting, ultimately to prepare it for transmission. When the data is on its way, routers and switches forward it through the network, based on the information that's already been added, without altering or adding any new information. TCP IP is structured into four layers, and each one has a specific job in this process. Let's follow an example of you making an HTTP request to load a web page and how this request moves down through the layers. At the top, we have the application layer. Think of it as the point where you prepare your package, determining its contents and preparing it for delivery. In the digital world, this is where your web browser or email client or other applications interact with the network. For example, when you type a URL into your browser, the application layer is responsible for creating the HTTP request that retrieves the web page that you want to view. This layer defines how the data should be transmitted using protocols like HTTP for web pages or HTTPS for secure browsing or even FTP for file transfers, ensuring the data is properly packaged for the next step in the communication process. Just as when you prepare your package, you need to specify the recipient and the content. The application layer ensures that your data is packaged with the right information before it's passed on to the next stage. Once your package is prepared, you need to get it to the right place. This is where the transport layer comes in acting like the postal system that picks up and then delivers your package. But instead of sending one whole package, the transport layer fragments your data into smaller, manageable pieces. These pieces are called segments. When using TCP or datagrams when using UDP. If you're using TCP, it makes sure each piece of the package gets delivered correctly and in order, just like a postal service that tracks each package. Before sending the actual data, TCP goes through a process called the three-way handshake, which is like confirming the postal route. Here's how the TCP three-way handshake works. First, your computer sends a SYN, or synchronized message, to the server, saying, I'm about to send some data, and this is the order I'll use. The server responds with a SYN ACK message, which confirms that it's ready to receive the data and sets its own order. Finally, your computer sends an ACK or acknowledgement message confirming that everything is understood and the reliable connection is established. On the other hand, if you're using UDP, it's more like dropping off a postcard in a mailbox. There's no confirmation or tracking. The message is just sent. It's 
faster, but less reliable. So there's no guarantee that it will arrive in the right order or even at all. This is why UDP is often referred to as send and pray. You just have to hope your data arrives. UDP is frequently used for things like streaming video, where it's critical that packets arrive as quickly as possible, and losing the odd packet is okay. At the transport layer, each segment gets a transport layer or layer four header, just like putting an address label on the package. This header includes important details like the port number, which application is being used, like web browsing or email, and in the case of TCP, sequence numbers to make sure each segment arrives in the right order. Once the data is packaged by the transport layer, it moves to the internet layer, where data is now referred to as a packet. This layer handles routing and ensures that the packet finds its way to the correct destination across different networks. The key protocol here is IP, the internet protocol, which assigns each packet a source and a destination address, much like writing an address on a package. At this layer, a network layer or layer three header is added to each packet, which includes the IP address of both the sender and the recipient. This ensures that each packet knows where to go, even if it needs to travel through multiple networks. As the packet moves through each router, the router looks at the destination IP address and it directs the packet closer to its final destination. Finally, your data arrives at the network access layer, which is responsible for getting your package physically delivered. Think of this layer as the delivery trucks and postal workers who actually carry your package from one place to another. This layer handles the physical transfer of your data across different networks and types of connections, ethernet, Wi-Fi, fiber optic, and so on and so forth. At this point, the packet that is passed from the internet layer is wrapped in a new package called a frame. This frame includes a layer two header, which is crucial for local delivery. The layer two header contains the source MAC address, the unique address of your device, like the sender's return address, and the destination MAC address, the address of the next device along the way or the router. This ensures that the data is sent to the correct next stop within the local network. As your frames travel through various routers or switches, the layer two header is decapsulated and updated at each new router or hub much like how packages get relabeled as they pass through different postal sorting facilities. Each time the data moves closer to its final destination, a new layer two header is added with updated source and destination MAC addresses, ensuring accurate delivery at every step of the way. Once these frames reach the server, the server decapsulates them by peeling off each layer of information in reverse order, starting with the layer two header and then moving through the internet layer and the transport layer until the original data is eventually revealed. This process ensures that the data from a bunch of different packets is properly reassembled and the server can interpret the request. Once the request is fully processed, the server generates a response, such as the web page you requested, and then encapsulates the response back into frames, wrapping it in the appropriate headers for each layer before sending it back to your device. However, on the way back, the packets may not follow exactly the same path, and some packets might even take entirely different routes to reach your device. Now that we've covered the TCP IP model, let's take a look at another way to think about how data moves across networks, the OSI model, or the Open Systems Interconnection Model. While the TCP IP model is the practical framework for today's internet, the OSI model breaks down everything into seven separate layers, giving a more detailed look at how data transmission works. In both models, the application layer is where human computer interaction occurs. This is where protocols like HTTP for web pages and FTP for file transfers and even SMTP for email will all be operating. However, the OSI model takes this a step further by dividing the functions of the application layer into three separate layers. Layer seven, the application layer. This is the same as in TCP IP. It's where applications interact with the network, providing services like web browsing, email, or even file transfers. Layer six, the presentation layer. Once your package is prepared, the presentation layer is like 
formatting the package in a way that both the sender and the receiver can both understand. This layer is responsible for translating data between the application and the network. It handles data encryption, compression, formatting, ensuring that the data is in a usable format for both the sender and the receiver. Think of it as the translator for different data formats, making sure the message is readable. Layer five, the session layer. The session layer is responsible for managing and maintaining communication sessions between devices. It establishes, keeps track of, and eventually terminates sessions to ensure that ongoing data exchanges, such as video streams or live chats, stay organized and continuous. This layer makes sure that the data from multiple sessions doesn't get mixed up and that each communication session uh, remains distinct and properly coordinated throughout the entire transmission. In the TCP IP model, these three layers, application, presentation, and session, are bundled together into a single application layer because in practice, applications often handle these functions all together. However, in the OSI model, they are distinct separate layers to emphasize their unique roles. Now, let's take a deeper look at the first two layers of the OSI model, the physical layer and the data link layer, which together form what's called the network access layer in TCP IP. Layer two, the data link layer, is where the address of the package gets attached. It ensures that your package or data reaches the right postal office or device on the same local network. It wraps the data into frames and includes a source MAC address, which is the device sending the data, and a destination MAC address, the device receiving it. This is like the unique house address where your package is being sent. As it travels through the local postal network or the local area network, it's important that it arrives at the right destination without any errors which the data link layer ensures by handling error detection and correction. Layer one, the physical layer. This is the bottom most layer and deals with the actual physical connection. In the postal analogy, the physical layer is like the delivery trucks or the roads and the mailboxes. It's responsible for transmitting raw bits over the physical medium, whether that's ethernet cables or Wi-Fi signals or even fiber optics. It takes care of how the package or data physically travels from one place to another, handling details like voltage, signal strength, and the medium, wired or wireless. In the TCP IP model, both the physical layer and the data link layer are combined into the network access layer since they work closely together to ensure that data can physically move across networks and arrive at the right destination. Here's a handy diagram that summarizes what we've just talked through and shows the OSI model layers lined up to the TCP IP layers. But why does TCP IP chosen over the OSI model to become the backbone of the internet? In the early days of networking, organization used different incompatible protocols, which made it difficult for networks to communicate with each other. These two models emerged to address this, TCP IP and the OSI model. While the OSI model provided a detailed theoretical framework with seven layers, TCP IP offered a simpler, more practical solution that worked across various systems. TCP IP gained popularity in the early 1970s because of its flexibility, scalability, and reliability. Unlike the OSI model, which was more of a conceptual design, TCP IP had real world applications and it was already proving itself in the expanding ARPANET. By 1983, TCP IP was officially adopted as the standard protocol for ARPANET, thanks to its ability to handle large scale networks and communicate across different hardware and software platforms. Ultimately, TCP IP's practical implementation, ease of use, and ability to scale with the growing internet made it the preferred choice over the OSI model. While the OSI model remains a valuable teaching tool, TCP IP became the backbone of the modern internet, enabling seamless communication between devices worldwide. So next time you send or receive a message, remember, 
It's TCP IP working behind the scenes to ensure your data gets where it needs to go in perfect form every single time. For more in-depth training and resources, including preparing for certifications like the CISSP, feel free to check out our site at deskcert.com. Stay safe online.